What's going on, everyone? Sid Gordon here with Core Medical Group, and today I uh, have one of the uh, most amazing contributions to Core Medical since uh, the beginning of time, uh, Charles Blaisdell. But before I get to him, guys, I wanted to point out my T-shirt, Cody Alfred's T-shirt here. I use the F word, but it really stands for freedom. I do use the F word, though. So, guys, check those out uh, if you can. Cody Alfred's got the shit as far as it when it comes to gear. But anyways, back to Charlie. The important thing today is him. Charlie, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day um, and uh, coming aboard here for this uh, podcast. You're welcome, Sid. I appreciate it. And I um, I, I just want to say on the outset, I'm, I'm very upset that I wasn't the first guest uh, asked to be on your podcast, but hopefully I'm not the last guest. No. Well, um, the reason why you weren't the first guest uh charlie is because you're so full of all this amazing wisdom and i didn't want to just astonish people with how smart you are <laughs> right off the bat but um so I i'm gonna give you guys a quick backstory i'm gonna leave out a little bit but um so charlie and i met uh, almost 11 years ago um he was on the west coast um he moves around like a gypsy but um i love him for that he's experienced a lot of life he's an amazing father um, and we met and we met through a text blast that I sent out and Charlie was working for another company at the time and <sighs> called me and said that, you know, he was, he's been in the industry. He's, was a very successful attorney in Massachusetts, um, and just fell in love with hormones and, um, his wife, Devin, um, they're, they're like the dream team. Uh, they've been great to me through the years and they basically work together on a daily basis and um, bring a lot to the table. But I'm going to let Charlie tell you the story about uh, having him come over here and uh, where where we've kind of what what's what the first five years of our relationship looked like what the industry looked like then, because I know you guys would rather hear him speak to me. Yeah, yeah. It's the industry has tra changed quite a bit. I got my start, like Sid said, I'm, I've been a trial attorney. For 27 years, uh, fortunately, I don't have to go to court anymore. Um, but I was working with a, a doctor out in Santa Monica. Uh, his name is uh, Dr. Rand McLean. He's an excellent practitioner, and I learned a lot from him. Um, but um, I didn't want to move to California for for you know some of the reasons that people uh, people like to talk about politically. I didn't want to move out there, so. Um, you know, the easiest way to say it is serendipity brought us together. The Lord brought us together, Sid. And um, I saw a text message from Core Medical. And I, I had heard of Core Medical. And I have heard of Sidney Gordon. And uh, I reached out to Sid. And Sid said, uh, yeah, I think I know who you are. Uh, you better get on your first plane out here to Delray Beach. And... Um, I talked to Devin and we, we jumped on the first plane out. And uh, I think it was the, the first and last time that I ever was able to spend a full day with Sidney Gordon. <laughs> uh, and, and a, a lot of people don't get that privilege. I got that privilege once in my life. Um, but, um, you know, we, we hit it off. We're, we're both from Massachusetts. We're both Boston guys. Um, and, uh, you know, Sid and I said to each other, hey, we're the type of people that will butt heads uh, from time to time about things because we're both so headstrong. Um, but the bottom line was the next day we're going to wake up and we're going to hug and kiss each other and tell each other that we we love each other because we have that much respect for each other, for each other's families, um, for the business of core medical. and." Um, it's been it's been the greatest pleasure of my life, um, other than getting to know God a little bit more in the last few years and my wife Devin. Being with Core Medical has been one of the greatest pleasures of my life, and I'm very fortunate for everything Core brought and for everything that you do, Sydney, for the business and for all of our thousands of patients. Yeah, it's been um, an interesting ride. Uh, Charlie, like I never thought we'd be where we are today. Um, I mean, we, we've always done a real good job of staying ahead of the curve. Um, you know, I want to go back. It's 
as a business owner, and, and, and you know, Charlie's one of our very strategic partners. I, I hold him in high regard. I really don't make any major decisions without him. Internally, it's been like that for almost a, over a decade. Um, but, you know, as far as, as, far as um, being, being the owner of the company, you know, the, the, hardest, the hardest thing is you get these phone calls, like the one I got from Charlie all the time, because I had some background on Charlie Pryor. Uh, how many people call you, Charlie, and say, I'm going to send you 900 people next week. Can you, you know, can I work for you? Can I do this? And there's, I mean, listen, we have five brand ambassadors that work at Core, and we've legitimately been approached by probably 80. Um, it's not an easy task. And people think that, you know, it might be easy in the beginning, but guess what? Then your audience kind of disappears slowly over time and you go from onboarding 20 or 30 people per month. And then you're, you know, then you're onboarding two or three and, you know, and uh, to stay consistent in growth in this business is a fucking challenge. And I see, I see it all the time. I mean, I've gotten very good with driving traffic. Charlie's done very well with driving traffic. Our ambassadors have been amazing. But, you know, Charlie did something in the beginning that is next to impossible from what I've seen. Um, he came aboard and, and grew. I think he's on his third book at Core Medical, and basically he's grown his book. He's passed the patients off to other coordinators and then grown another book because he just has a niche, and he has such quality... Um, such a quality audience um, for if you think of hormone replacement therapy in New England, you're buying it from Charles. You're getting it from the resources that Charles Blaisdell has. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, so when I first came on, we were uh, core medical was located in Delray beach. Um, and I had told Sid, um, I got this plan. I got a business plan to get us into Massachusetts. And, um, there, um, there were only maybe two doctors in Massachusetts doing testosterone therapy, and uh, and they weren't they weren't really good. They weren't really popular. They weren't marketing. And I saw an opening because um, I do have a business school um, degree. That's my undergraduate, and then I went to law school. So I've got that business um, business sense. So anyway, so I saw an opening. I told Sid, I said, I think we can do this. I think we can open up something in Massachusetts. And I think the number was, I think said. I think Sid had said to me, yeah, 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 sure. Okay. Why don't you bring me like 400 people <laughs> 200. Down, down here to Delray Beach, <laughs> 200. bring about 400 New England people in, and then we'll talk about opening up an office. And uh, I took that as one of the biggest challenges I've ever had. I mean, it was a bigger challenge than passing the bar exam. Um and so I, well, I can bring up. in the 400 patients, Charlie. I couldn't pass the bar. So yeah, it says a lot, <laughs> I, <laughs> a lot less about I, me. I, I, I literally would stay up and my wife would attest to this. I would stay up till two, three in the morning working on cultivating leads and referrals and leads and referrals. And I think it took, you know, I don't know. It might have taken legitimately about two years. I forget now. It's been it over was, 10 it was less than that because I, I, I'll tell you, within two years, we had the first office open up there of you working there, I believe, right? Because yeah, we had it, it, we had it uh, nine, 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 nine and a half years ago. Yeah, so that's about right. Yeah, about two. Yeah. 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 And Sid, and Sid, no, so I wasn't Sidney's golden boy at the time. Sid had a golden boy at the time. There's no he such will, thing. He will remain nameless. Um, and I told Sid, said, I'm going to take his belt away from him. And Sid again <laughs> laughed at me and said, yeah, okay, all right, sure, you're going to, sure. And, and I'm telling you, within a year, not only had I taken his belt, but he was either ejected from core medical or there was a friendly parting of the ways. Uh, I'm not privy to that. But um, I think Sid, uh, Sid saw a little something in me and he knew that I had a little veracity and he knew that I had a great work ethic um, and I think you knew that I was a faithful guy too, as you are. And, um, and you opened up the office in Massachusetts and, um, gosh, I lost count of how many New England patients we have now. But like you said before, when people think of testosterone in New England, um, they think of core medical now. Yeah, it's been, so while, while Char I'm going to go back to so a little banter here while Charlie was passing his bars and 
being a in, in business school, I was I was uh, actually he's a little bit older than me, but I I really learned uh, what what it takes to to really to really uh, say things in certain demeanors and direction to uh, really light light some internal fire and flame. And Charlie already had that, but he's super he's competitive, um, you know. And it was I've never looked at a relationship with you as me being me being in charge um, of any major decision or like it's, it's just been a great marriage and, you know, opening up that office, I, I was scared. You know, I was, I, I talk about this all the time on here. There's three stages of business. You guys are probably sick of hearing it, but the, Oh shit, is this going to fucking work? I have all my life into this and I have these kids at home that I need to feed and I can barely feed them. And then what happens with the community of core that we've built, Charlie, is you have the Charles place Dells, the, Matt Stevens, the Mike Arrows, the Kalen O'Shea's, the Allisons that were really our core group of guys and girls. And then you're focused on making sure that they can feed their family and that they're not going to leave you. That's another phase of it. And then once you get that comfort stage of where everyone's happy, they're making money, they're in a good environment, then it goes to the stage we're in now, which is the fact that we don't really care if you sign up with us or not. We want to educate you and we're going to do a really good job educating you. And the beauty of core now is we've turned into these into a, a group 11 years ago where we're shitting our pants and trying to make every penny we can to now sitting back and just watching the beauty happen and being real as fuck. And people really can feel a difference there. And, and, I, and I know Charlie doesn't have to worry about where his next dollar comes from. And, and, and it's a good feeling to just be able to have a conversation with someone and not be worried about the financial outcome. You, you see that, do you feel that same like that same change in the dynamic of core, Charlie? Uh, for sure. I mean, I have through the years um, made friends with more people that have never become patients that will call me to ask me about their doctor who might be treating them this way. or And, and a lot of people, and they're friends, they're not our patients. And they know I'm not a physician, um, but they always want my opinion on things. So I, I and, and I'm happy to do that. It's just time out of the day. Um, I think the last statistic I read is the testosterone replacement business has grown. I think from the year 2000, it was a $100 million business to I think year 2022. So 22 years, it's grown to, I, I forget if it was three or 4 billion. billion. Yeah, it's about, the, yeah, it's about, it's about 3 so, billion right now. So the industry has grown. The patients have got, gotten exponentially smarter. Dr. Google has been wonderful for people. I also see, um, I also see, unfortunately, the primary care doctors have not gotten a Educated. lot smarter. Yeah. They're still far underdosing people. They're not giving them their supporting ancillary meds. They're not testing for estradiol. Um, we have all these fantastic new medicines, the new peptides. They know nothing about them. They I, I, I tell people all the time, glutathione, a simple amino acid, the building block of life, is the best kept secret in all of medicine. And primary care doctors don't even know how to pronounce glutathione. Nope. So um, the industry has changed. The patient database has gotten much, much smarter. But unfortunately, I don't want to knock all the primary cares because there's some very good ones out there. You know that, Sid. Mm -hmm. um, but they haven't kept up. You know, so I see I see that as a lot. You know, that that's that's like a summation of what I've seen for the last 10 years. Um, you know, so, and it's good that the patients have gotten smarter. So it's funny that you said this. I, I was uh, I, I was with Jimmy on the podcast um, about three weeks ago. And he asked me what he thought the biggest change that I've seen in the industry was. And I said, well, when I started <laughs> oh, about 13 years ago now almost, it's just insane, Charlie. Um, it would take me like one, two, three phone calls, two hours to educate and onboard one person to make them feel like they were not taking a freaking steroid. They were not taking a designer drug. Now it's like the phone rings. I want it. I don't need to know anything else. I, I, my friend's on it. He's, he's, his life's completely changed. And then obviously with all the military, um, the ripple effect we've had inside the U S military, it's just been another level of, of insanity. You know, we have 2,500, uh, active duty veteran, um, 
patients that are in the U.S. military, probably more that we don't know about. That's just my count as of the beginning of this year. Obviously, we've onboarded a few thousand people since then. But, you know, that community's been amazing. The first responder community, which you own in Massachusetts, amazing. And, you know, before when you'd speak to one person there, it was a different, it was a different feel. They were actually scared to talk to their departments about it. Yeah, well, I think a lot of the law enforcement and fire um, felt a lot of comfort and still do feel a lot of comfort with me because I got my, uh, I cut my teeth at the, uh, the Essex County District Attorney's Office. So I was on the prosecution side um, of the fence early on in my career, and then I jumped over to the, uh, the evil side. But a lot of the guys knew me um, from being in the courts with the DA's office, and a lot of the guys knew me from, you know, as being an attorney, practicing attorney in Salem, Mass. Um, so a lot of the law enforcement guys felt very, very comfortable with me felt very, very comfortable going to us and coming to our clinic because they knew, uh, you know, I, I'm, as an attorney, I have an obligation, you know, to do things the right way and to not tell lies, frankly. And um, so, you know, um, I got a lot of uh, law enforcement referrals. I got a lot of, uh, I got a lot of lawyers on board. I got some state judges. I got one federal judge. Um, and, um, you know, that, I think that's probably the thing I've been the most proud of is the first responders of law enforcement, bringing them into core medical. Now, now it's to the to the point where I think pretty much every first responder in Massachusetts, if they're going to do any type of therapy, they're coming to core medical. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm very, very proud of that. Yeah, it's 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 funny. I uh, we had. Um, was, it's I'm, I'm not going to use names but my brother-in-law is in europe right now and he's doing a movie and the movie is this uh it's essentially like a jason bourne but like it's based on a real life jason bourne and um john calls me last weekend and goes you're not gonna freaking believe this one Sid." i said what's up he's like i sp I'm playing this person i had to spend some time on the phone with him prior to a lot of zoom calls the whole nine yards and the last phone call, he said he didn't want to say anything until it was all over. But he said, you know, uh, I know your brother-in-law said like real good. <laughs> and I was like, you got to be kidding me. And he told me who it was. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. So John's in Europe filming for um, a, a uh, agency guy, on, about an, an agency guy here in the United States. He's one of the top agency guys ever to walk the face of the earth and knows me intimately. And I didn't even know who he was. So it's like, it was pretty crazy. And, um, you know, that stuff happens a lot. You're like, I got on a plane not too long ago. I sit down next to this guy and he's got a core medical t-shirt on. And on the flip side of that, we did a uh, t-shirt giveaway at a festival not too long ago. And I was walking down the street. I was driving down the street on my golf cart with Juliet two weeks ago. And there was a uh, homeless woman with a core medical t-shirt on. So I guess that can go both ways. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, I've uh, I've seen people with core medical shirts just driving around in my neighborhood, and I think like, I don't even know who these people are. <laughs> exactly, I, mean, I know core, core medical shirts. I, I think th I think we give out legitimately about three thousand a year. It's crazy, yeah. but um. Yeah. So, Charlie, let me let me back up a little bit here. So, when when you when a patient gets to you at core medical, right? Because um, you you really set the tone across the board. And, and I've explained this before, but hearing it from you, the person that kind of kind of designed the onboarding process at CORE that I've really followed after and implemented across the board, can you talk about whether they come in through Instagram or Facebook or referral? What's your process with them? What do they expect when they meet with you? Yeah, well, um, you know, the very first thing we'll talk about is what brought them here. Um, you know, whether it's, I'm taking naps in the afternoon. I have no energy. My muscle tone is horrible. I have unexplained weight gain. I don't even have the energy to play with my kids anymore. Um, we'll talk about that. And then I'll ask them, um, you know, if they've ever had their testosterone tested. And a lot of times, unfortunately, it's no, my doctor won't test my testosterone level. Um, and then we'll talk about, you know, what numbers are, but then we'll kind of phase into the fact that we don't really treat numbers. You know, a testosterone number, I'll tell somebody, a testosterone number 
there's a reference range. The word reference is the key word in that. It's just for reference by physicians. Unfortunately, too many doctors will look at that number and they don't use it for reference. They use it as gold. They use it as, okay, you're not below this number. I won't treat you. You're in the range, of, right, Charlie? You're in range. They're in, they're in range. Yeah, right. but there's a difference between in range and being in reference range. And the way that you just explain that is worth its weight in gold, actually, because that is so important to the listeners out there to understand that, which I'm sure Charlie's going to get into, even though your total testosterone might be in reference range, there's a lot more to the picture than your fucking total testosterone. So yeah. go on, Charlie. And, and, and the reference range, I think... Uh, I think when when I got started with you, I believe it was maybe 400 to 1400. And now that reference range has been downshifted down to 250 to 900. Yep. Yeah, it was 350 you know, so, to 1100 when we started, Charlie. Yeah. I still have so, my first blood work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's. And the crazy part is, too, is that different labs will use different reference ranges. There's not even. So it can't be a medical range if everyone's not using the same medical range right. It, right. if so, it's a reference so, range everyone can use it so somebody might be at 400 let's, let's just use this example you're at 400 you get up you get energy all day you play with your kids you build muscle i'm at 400 i can't get out of bed in the morning i um you know i, I can't put on muscle i'm putting on fat uh ed I forgot to mention that one. That's a big one. Um, so you could be at 400 and be fine, Sid. I can be at 400 and can be one foot into the grave. And and for primary care doctors to just say, hey, um, I don't treat people unless they're below 200. You know, it's wrong. So maybe the 400 Sidney Gordon is fine. He doesn't need therapy. He hasn't even looked for it. But the 400 Charlie Blaisdell needs the therapy. So that's what we do here at CORE very well. We don't treat the number, we treat the patient, we treat the symptoms. Um, and uh, that's a big fault with the industry. So, you know, I, I'll i build a rapport with the patient. Obviously every patient gets my cell phone number. I encourage them to text me. I'm a seven day a week worker. I always have been, um, even when I was practicing law. So everybody knows, you know, if the Patriots are playing, they're not to text me. If the <laughs> Patriots are on, they're not, they're not to text me. I tell everybody uh, after the game, they can text me. Um, but, um, you know, we get them, we get them signed up. We get them into the office. We have a new office in Lexington on Militia Drive. Um, so uh, Brianna, our, our physician's assistant is there. And so we get them into Lexington. We do a very good panel of bloods, as you know, I'm sure you've talked about already. Uh, we do a physical and um, then the medical staff will reach back to them and give them some recommendations. And that's when I step back in after the, the medical staff has made their recommendations and I kind of fine tune exactly what they think they need to do. You know, for instance, if somebody's vitamin B is high and they're looking to do vitamin B, I might talk them out of spending the money on vitamin B and point them into another direction, which, which their bloods uh, justify. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's very important. You know, my job is, is, uh, is a patient care coordinator. Um, and, and in that line, the word care so is the most important word to me. Something that comes yeah. to, to mind there, like when you just explain that, so just for the guys, the Charles not changing protocols, but there are people that come aboard and they start self-diagnosing. I think I need this. I think I need that. And, you know, that's why I say it all the time. That's why GNC is a billion dollar organization because people go in there and start self-diagnosing. So the beauty of it is, is that, it, and it started with, you know, myself and Charlie when we were grinding away, is that if someone doesn't need something, Right. It's like in anything in the world, it's like, you know, we just don't provide it. It's, it's just a waste. And the last thing we want to find out is that, you know, we took money from somebody and it didn't do them any justice. So, sure. I mean, talk about the ethical side of that, Charlie, like the people that come through the door. There's two sides of it. Some people that want everything under the sun and we have to tell them, you know, the bad news, you know. 
Yeah, well, I don't think it's good that they come in and they want to buy everything because then they don't really know what's helping them. Exactly. You know, so like the vitamin B example is is the is the most uh, it's the most popular example I can give you because everybody hears, oh, vitamin B causes fat loss, vitamin B, and my friend and this friend, but their levels are fine. They come in with like six, seven hundred levels of vitamin B and they want to do it, and I say, no, don't, don't. You know, well, my other friend's clinic is giving it to him. I said, well, you don't, you don't need it. Um, and that's the other thing too. Some of the other clinics I heard, I just got off the phone yesterday with a guy who one of the other clinics in New England um, that opened up after, uh, well, after us, wants people to buy, I think, a year's worth of medicines out of the gates. And that's really gimmicky. You know, it's we, bad medicine. <laughs> It's, yeah, I mean, it's it's it. It's gimmicky is what it is. You shouldn't be taking a new patient and selling them, forcing them to buy a year's worth of medicine. So, you know, our protocol is a 10 week testosterone protocol, but a lot of guys don't need the full dose. So they might have a 12 week or a 14 week protocol out of it mm -hmm. if the medical staff doesn't want them on the full dose. So that's why when uh, we run, when we do our annual special each year that we only do it on existing patients that have had a consistent protocol. You know, right. they know what they are approved for and they know what they're going to get. For someone to come through the door on their first order be forced to get 12 weeks of medication is just ridiculous. I see that. And I also see a lot of clinics, not a lot of clinics, but there's a few clinics out there giving people as many bottles of testosterone as they would like to purchase. And, and I thought the days of the cowboy clinics were long gone, but I don't think they're gone, buddy. No, I just had a guy come in the office last week, Charlie, with two. I see he's kept telling me about the medication he got. And I'm like, hey, man, I've known you for a while. Just can you bring in the office? He's from the other coast. He was coming this way. He comes in and he, now I understand what he was saying. He had two orders from two separate pharmacies because <laughs> that he got at the same time. Four bottles, of, sorry, three bottles of test, a bottle of Deca, um, Winstrel, and a bunch of peptides. I'm like, what'd you spend on this? He's like $3,700. And I'm like, dude, like, it's it's scary to me, Charlie, because, you know, I, I mean, I like to think we, we, we vet our pharmacies real well, but, like, if we get caught up at the same place, I mean, you can talk on that, you know, you're, 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 you're the ripple effect of a lot of people getting in trouble for for something like that could be tremendous or an interruption in business that a pharmacy gets shut down like it's it's crazy and it's if the if the HRT clinic is facilitating a doctor i mean a patient in doctor shopping right even though the one pharmacy and the other one didn't do the right thing if they placed at the same time it didn't make it into central fill i've seen that happen before same day processing doesn't make central fill till the end of the day when it gets reported they beat it every time that way and then we have xyz pharmacy that we've been doing business with for a decade that's been above board and all of a sudden they get an audit because of it and they have a freeze in business and now we're struggling so the for the consumers out there there are the correct ways to go about doing this Charlie's a great resource to understand what is right and what is wrong in this industry. He's helped me with it tremendously. You, you want to talk yeah, about? I think. The, yeah, talk about yeah, that, Charlie. Yeah. Well, let me just let me just touch just for one sec. I think what we at Core bring to the patients is um, we are vastly far ahead of all the other clinics in our compliance. Vastly far ahead, and that's something that you know I demanded out of the clinic right from the early days. That we do everything by the books. We're bringing the patients into the office. They're doing their bloods on time. We're not prescribing testosterone to somebody who does not need it. I mean, that's um, a lot of clinics, they will do the bloods. They might not even do a physical. And I swear they're, they're just prescribing testosterone regardless of what their blood say. Yeah, just says, it, it's just a CBC just, panel. I've seen people come in and say, oh, I just got my testosterone with a CBC and, panel. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, and that's that's something that, um, you know, I, I know the names of the places. Of course, I'm not going to mention them, but I'm very proud that we don't do any, We've never done anything like that. You know, our medical staff is, uh, our medical staff is by the book when yeah. it comes to everything. So um, And grown quite a bit. <laughs> And grown tremendously, yeah. Yeah, we're up to. We have thirteen PAs and MPs right now, and three and three doctors. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I mean, I have sponged up a lot of my knowledge from our medical staff over the years. I just would sit and sit and listen and listen and listen and watch and take notes. And so everything that I'm talking about, it's not coming from me going to med medical school. It's coming from our medical staff teaching me. You know, I've been on testosterone for 14 years now. I started when I was 38 um, and I'm 52 now. Started when I was 38 and I'm, uh, I'm 52 now. And um, which brings me to another idea, um, fertility. A lot of discussion that goes on with patients. If I start testosterone, will I be able to have children? Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, um, I have five children. So I'm doing my job to populate the earth. Um, I had three of those children before I started testosterone and I have, I've had two since I started testosterone. My son is four, my daughter is gonna be one this week. Um, so, and I've been on testosterone for 14 years and I don't have any issues with fertility. So now I'm not saying this isn't a uh, double blind placebo test that Charlie's saying just cause it happened to him. But I'm saying in my experience, I have no issue with fertility. Yeah, I mean, so. I, I share the same um, accomplishes, accomplishments while being on TRT as you. Uh, both my daughters um, conceived while being on, te on testosterone. Um, you know, and I, there's hundreds of hundreds of patients. You know, Nick Kay's uh, biggest thing is, you know, his doctor pulled him off testosterone for like nine months uh, trying to have them conceive and, it, and it, you know, was it was useless. Um, his biggest thing is, oh, man, I wish I met you before I did that because he was like suicidal. Um, his testosterone was like one, 103 when we pulled it. Um, he was having horrible thoughts. You know, he was very active in the military. And, you know, one thing I can tell you guys out there, whether you're in the military or not, a low testosterone level does not help in any avenue of your life. Um, the biggest thing that I've noticed and, and, and heard too, Charlie, this is a big stigma. Oh, is it going to make me angry? Okay. So I had this conversation the other day. I wanted to talk with you about it uh, today. I, I had a patient that tells me, ah, I'm afraid I have anger issues. Okay, buddy, whatever. Um, well, your anger issues will come way faster and way more aggressively. Um, uh, uh, taking black market, obviously, yes. The designer drugs, yes. But on basic TRT, from my experience, and Charlie, you can chime in, it's been the opposite. Because when I had a 250 test level and had no sex drive and was out of shape and couldn't be a productive person during the day, it caused me to have depression. That depression turned into anger. Once my testosterone increased and I started to live life better, I had more gratitude and the anger went away. And that's the way that I explained it. And, you know, we're very careful on dosing. No one in, at, in core medical is ever getting over 200 milligrams a test. It's not happening. Don't call us if you want more. But what I can tell you is, is the black market you're taking, because typically that's the person that calls, the 100 and the 200, the, sorry, the 300 bottle of Sustanon that you get, buddy, does not have 300 milligrams of Sustanon in it, right? And a lot of pa a lot of patients, you know, believe us and they give us the opportunity to get them on the right path. And after 10 weeks, they're like, wow, I feel better than I did on my 900 milligrams of testosterone. And I'm not as angry because you know, it's in the bottle. Everything's batch tested. It's sterility tested. We know that you're getting a 200 milligram injection every time you take it. There's no peaks and valleys. There's supporting meds. So the anger side of things really made me think a lot the other day. And I, and I'd say, I'd say right now, if you're alone by yourself, like I was, and you're experiencing that type of stuff, you should get your test checked out. But that anger is even tenfold more when you have kids and you have a wife and you're trying to be a good dad and you're trying to be um, financially supportive and also a good husband in multiple different ways and you can't be, that additional pressure and anxiety causes a lot more anger than anything else I've ever seen. So Charlie, you got anything to stream on that? Yeah, I won't say that I've never heard of a patient tell me he's getting angry off test. I Anxious, would say yeah. You, yeah, yeah. No, angry. Oh. I've, I've had, I've, in, in, let's say the last 10 years, I think I have uh, thousands of guys that have come through New England, maybe two, that said, I'm getting too angry off of this. Um, I think, 
you know, I read a study a while back. I think the roid rage, we're talking about roid rage is what we're talking about. Short switch. I think, yeah, I think what the study had said was um, it's not people that have been using testosterone. It's people that have been abusing anabolic steroids, which are derivatives of testosterone. Mm -hmm. And it's because their testosterone was high and their estrogen was also high. The combination of the two things that would cause the raging or, you know, when you bump into somebody at the gym at the water cooler, they growl at you and act like assholes. Um, it, I don't think it happens on testosterone at all, really, other than a rare handful of people. Um, I've noticed that I tell guys like things start to roll off your shoulders a lot better. Mm -hmm. Your mood gets better. You feel more of like, you know, testosterone is what makes a man a man. You feel more of a man. You feel more of a sense of purpose. Um, but yeah, the, the roid, the roid rage thing, it, it's just not part of the game. I mean, we're not letting the estrogen get up really high with the testosterone. We're keeping the estrogen at a, at a good, normal, safe level. Um, so for like the viewers out there, um, I'll get a little bit, uh, detailed here. Um, so there's what we really look at are, there's like, there's three major components that we look at that involve your testosterone immediately. And then also contributing things that we make sure you're, you're in good standing with prior to putting you on testosterone. There's a, a multitude of those. Okay. As far as cholesterol, PSA levels, liver enzymes, uh, it goes on and on. So in order to get approved for testosterone, those things to be in range. But when we look at testosterone, we're, we're looking at your free, we're looking at your total, and we're looking at your sex hormone binding globulins. In conjunction to that, we want to make sure that your estradiol is not too low and not too high because being estrogen dominant is really bad. It's a very bad place to be. I've been there before. Um, there's physical issues that can happen. There's a lot of mental issues that can happen. Um, I cry in commercials. I get that from patients all the time. You're not taking your estrogen blockers. And the big thing is, is that, you know, when we look at, when we look at total testosterone, we also are looking at your free testosterone and then also what is, what is in the middle there, your sex hormone binding globulin, which can cause things to not absorb properly. So there's a lot that we look at in, in conjunction with just total testosterone. It's not just to, total testosterone to me is not as important as free testosterone. That's my opinion. Um, and that's our doctor's opinion, most of them. And um, having being estrogen dominant, Charlie, why don't you talk about like, why don't you talk about the causes of being estrogen dominant? You can be estrogen dominant without being on testosterone too. Yeah, well, estrogen, you know, it's, it's estradiol in men. That's the, the male version. Um, you don't want to be very high without being on your blockers um, because that's when you'll have your side effects. The gynecomastia is the number one, moodiness, um, water retention. But it's really, really important that you don't go too low either because your joints, you need estrogen to keep your joints lubricated. So your joints start to dry out. You get sore shoulders, elbows, knees. Um, and probably the worst of all is, you know, guys will start testosterone and the estrogen blockers might work a little too good and they'll feel their erection quality go down fast. And they're just mind blown. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a very easy fix. Very easy fix. Um, but, um, you know, I think that that makes me think a little bit about the new therapy that we've been using and clomiphene, um, because now, you know, now that HCG is not readily available and has gotten so much more expensive, we phased in a lot of our patients uh, up in New England on to and clomiphene, which is really, you know, I, I, I don't know the ins and outs of it like our medical staff knows but it works in conjunction with the anastrozole really, really well. Mm -hmm. From what I understand, the um, uh blocks the, the estrogen receptor. Yeah, you're not going to have and a lot more. Well, there's a lot less, 90% less issues with gyno since we've been incorporating enclomiphene. Yeah, yeah. So, what, so from what I understand, it blocks the estrogen receptor, which then tells our pituitary gland, um, we need to make estrogen. 
Now, our body doesn't make estrogen. Our body, a male's body, converts testosterone into estrogen. So the pituitary says, I need estrogen in, in this, this guy. I need to get some estrogen out there. How am I going to do this? Ah, I know. I'm going to send a signal down to the testes to make more testosterone. So then it will turn into uh, estrogen. Yeah. So then the estrogen gets into the, um, the body, but it can never lock into the estrogen receptors because the enclomiphene has bound up that receptor. So the estrogen that is in the blood that's not getting bound into receptors is absolutely harmless. It's absolutely harmless. It's the estrogen that is locking into the estrogen receptors that are causing the problem. It's the same exact thing as what total testosterone is to free testosterone, total estrogen is to free estrogen. So the enclomiphene is really, it, it's really a great therapy. I've never been a big fan of clomiphene citrate. I, I, I've never liked it because it has- Well, if you had gyno, you would have been. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but to put to put a man on clomiphene, and some guys have no side effects. When I tried to take clomiphene years ago, I felt horrible. It has something in it called um, zuclomiphene, Z-U-clomiphene. I, I believe it has zuclomiphene and enclomiphene. Um, and so what- um, what the zuclomiphene does is it, it gives you all a lot of the bad side effects. So what's been great is they've been able to isolate the enclomiphene out of clomiphene citrate, and that's what we're using. Now, the enclomiphene is, is the stuff in clomiphene that you really want. Um, so again, I'm... I'm uh, so I'm I'm talking like a doctor here because I'm I'm trying to remember what the medical staff has told me about these things, but um, but the enclomiphene has been a nice addition to our protocol. Yeah, I mean we've 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 uh, surely incorporated quite a few different meds over the past years, and um, and uh, the the biggest thing you know is is to just not get get complacent with any of it, right? So like um, we we send our PAs and doctors to these forums and continuing education and now that we're licensed in all these states they're doing all these ces and it's been it's been wild um so charlie give me give me your top before we wrap up your top three highlights um both in core i, I know you're successful with um partners with the Wahlbergs and the Wahlburgers. um i know that you're you've you're a great day trader as well if you want to talk about those couple things and then maybe some of your top your 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 top pivot your your top accomplishments in the last 10 years in in core and in conjunction with core yeah um well yeah the um a lot of people in new england know i'm a part owner of the Wahlburgers restaurants um I also, uh, with Mark's older brother, Jimmy, I own a, a film production studio called Wall Street Productions. So we do a lot of faith-based movies. Uh, we do a lot of uh, stuff in the addiction space. We're just wrapping up a documentary right now in the addiction space. Um, so I'm very, very proud of my affiliation with the family and with the work I've been able to do. Um, and trading, heck, I, I started trading when I was 16 years old and high school. So if, uh, you know, I just love to watch the market. I love to stay on top of, you know, current events. I, I think, I think in this day and age, if you're the type of person who's burying your head in the sand and not following along with what's happening in the world, mm -hmm. you're doing yourself and your family a big disservice. And this is not to make any political statements, but you need to pay attention to what's going on in our world. Mm -hmm. um, so um, in regards to in regards to uh, what I'm the most proud of with with core, boy, that's a really that's a really difficult question, Sid. Um, you know, I'm, the fact we're still open, <laughs> <laughs> the fact that anybody's still listening to what we have to yeah, say. Yeah, exactly. Well, I I would say, and I think you might agree with me. I mean, you can say all the you know all the military stuff that you've spearheaded has been fantastic, but just knowing how many people that we as a business have helped uh -huh. either save their marriage, um, make them better fathers, make them better at their sales job, their regular job, um, caught 
answers that their doctor would have never found. I mean, so I'll give you this by way of analogy. I know, I know you want to touch on that. Um, as an attorney, I felt like all I was doing was tearing things down. People would never come to me because things were going good and I could never really fix things. They either got arrested, they're getting sued. Um, their wife cheated on them, their husband. It was just hor it was horrible, very stressful and very, it's a tough job. Yeah. You know, and I knew when my mom stopped telling everybody that her only son was an attorney, I knew that was my chance to get out of the law profession <sighs> and into something else. But here at CORE, it's like I've done a 180 flip. I have now, instead of tearing things apart and fighting, I've been able to help people and um, piece things together. Yeah. So I, I, I think, honestly, help, helping people, seeing guys super happy and Oh gosh, I just left my physical with Brianna. She is amazing. I can't even tell you how many times I hear that. And I'm not just saying Every that. Every day. <laughs> not just saying that because I work with Brianna. You know, you see Betsy all the time. I see Brianna. Um, you know, they're fantastic. They're they're really good. You know, a lot of people don't look forward to going to their doctor with us. A lot of people look forward to seeing the medical staff. Yeah, I mean, um, especially but, when they're in the but, clinics but, there. Sorry, go on. But yeah, but I know you want to touch upon um finding problems in the bloods because that's been uh that's been one of those things i never expected to see and, it, and i've seen it it really takes away your faith in basic health care you know yeah for, for me to for me to have so my my mother two years ago um was on her deathbed and um it was during just from the beginning of covid and I looked at her medical charts from like four years prior. They had they had them at the doctor's office, and she had like no blood work in there. It was like like one page of blood work, and I'm like, this is insane. This woman's like 60 years old. Like, how the hell do you not look at like real? I'm I'm used to seeing like real intense blood, and if something comes, I'll I tell everyone this all the time. If something's wrong with you, our blood work's not gonna tell us exactly what it is, but it's gonna let us know something's wrong with you, right? And we're gonna tell you, we're gonna help you. And the fact that we've probably found prostate cancer in over 40 people under the age of 40 years old is fucking ridiculous to me, right? Yeah. The fact and, that we and found- And this is, finding, this is finding the prostate cancer when they first come in for the appointment. Yes, exactly correct. Not because before, there's, no. There's, there's, there's never been anybody who's been with our clinic who's got prostate cancer from testosterone. That's a whole nother- Bullshit story there. It sure is. Um, so, you know- one thing that we do look at is based on your age and based on your PSA number, we have a good idea of what's going on. And if you do come in, you get your blood work done and you're 30 years old and your prostate's slightly elevated, it's time to go get your prostate checked. It Just because you're not 45 doesn't mean that you can't take the precautions. And we push that precaution. And like the fact that we've caught in, you know, brain tumors, <laughs> like we're an HRT clinic catching brain tumors. The fact that the patient was at their general practitioner two weeks before and did blood work, and then we found the brain tumors is freaking insane to me. Yeah, like, well, they they don't they don't test things like prolactin, and, and you know if a prolactin is super elevated, Doctor K just found a pituitary um, tumor in one of my high school classmates. He went right to Doctor K's office for his physical. Um, in Webster, Massachusetts, went right to see the doc, tested prolactin. He had a pituit now, so now he's getting it taken care of. This is my high school uh, friend that I played football with in school. So, um, yeah, I mean, listen, I'm very proud of helping patients, but I would say, and I think you're going to agree with me, I'm equally as proud as helping people live. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> catching catching those cancers. The You know, I had... Uh... I had a patient um, when I was in San Diego, I was talking to him and he was a police officer, um, an older guy. And I said, Hey man, you know, I think you should really come in and get, and come check us out. And he's like, Oh man, I don't want to take testosterone. I'm not interested in, in getting cancer and this, that, and the other. And the stigma is still there in some demographics and some age groups. It's harder than others, depending on your friends, your circle of friends. All it takes is one friend in your circle to show that change. And then the rest of them follow. Right. You know what I mean? So I said to him, I said, well, if not for the 
people, if not for the testosterone, come in for the blood work, dude. Like, come in and see what is going on with you. Because, I, I mean, show me the last time the Bureau had you go in for a physical exam. And they, obviously, it's nothing, right? And the reality of it is, is that, like, I urge people out there, whether they want to go on testosterone or not, to take advantage of a very inexpensive, very high-level blood work and a free telehealth visit. <laughs> Basically, what it comes down to, it's all incorporated in, in one cost, and and it's it's um and we're here like we don't care if you don't buy testosterone from us. Take advantage of the blood work. Yeah, I agree. I tell that to men all the time that you know that I might have an inclination that they're not going to be a good fit for us, but and they said they haven't. They don't have a primary care doctor. They haven't done bloods. I said, well, come on in, do some bloods, meet the medical staff, get some recommendations. You don't have to buy anything. You don't have to go on any therapy. But at least you'll have a nice set of bloods that you'll be able to use as a baseline. So as the years go on in your life, you'll be able to look back and see how your levels might have changed from when you were, say, 30 or 35 to 45 to 55. The one other um, thing, too, that that really gets me is like, you know, nine times, sorry, 9.7 out of 10 times people get their blood work done and it's fine, right? The guy that really gets me, the girl that gets me is, I haven't had blood work done in 10 years. All right, so what are you going to do, wait another 10? Like, come, like, here, I'll pay for it for you. Come with me. You know what I mean? Like, that's the hard stuff too. Like, what's going on where, like, you know, you have a, a wife, you have a kid, you have a business, you're an employer, employee, you have friends. What, like, with everything going on in the world right now, with the changes in in our in our supplementation, with our changes in, you know, stress levels, all that stuff. Why wouldn't you get your blood work done? Like, that's the craziest thing to me. And like, we urge that so much, like just get your blood work done. And, you know, Charlie's been, been big on that. You know, we, we're only required, you know, if, if you come through the office, right. And you have something going on with you where we require blood work sometimes every three months, sometimes every six months, but mandatory every eight months, mandatory, you have to get it done or you cannot get your next order. That's not the, the law. We just, minus four months off what the law is to make sure that people are staying number one compliant and number two on top of their health. And they appreciate that. I mean, we don't have 10,000 people doing it because they don't appreciate it. So yeah, I'm, I'm always, I'm always pleased when I have a patient that says, geez, I'd like to do my bloods like every three months. You know, is that going to be a problem, Charlie? I said, no, I wish everybody was like me you. too. I wish everybody was like you. You make it so much easier on the medical staff and then we can tweak and see if everything's, you know, if the estradiol is where it needs to be, or if your testosterone needs to be dropped just a little bit, or perhaps you need to do your shot bi-weekly instead of every seven days. Especially after that first 10 weeks. Like, that's a, yeah. that's a big thing. But, um, well, Charlie, I got to tell you, buddy, your uh, inspiration to pretty much the whole core team, man, your Devin has been amazing over the years. You guys have uh, really, really done great things. I know there's a lot of patients that love you. Um, and, um, I, I appreciate everything. Um, and, uh, and hope for uh, many more buddy. So well, thank you so the, much. The, the feeling is mutual, Sid, for all you've done for all your staff and your employees and your generosity, um, in the communities that, that core medical is at. It's been, it's been great. So I'm, uh, I love you. You know that. Um, and I'm very proud of what, everything you've done. As well. Thanks, brother. We'll be in touch soon. Guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Thanks for your loyalty. Thanks, Sid.